Hi everyone, it's a new calendar year. It's January, so if I haven't said it yet, Happy New Year. And in the football world, it means one thing. The transfer window for winter is now open. But what does it mean from a financial perspective and what would clubs be considering financially when it comes to doing business in January? For those of you that don't know, the transfer window is a period of opportunity for all clubs to assess their squad requirements and to make changes to that in the form of player sales, purchases and loans. So obviously there's going to be a financial consideration to that. The majority of player trading or player registration trading is done in the summer transfer window. And that's largely because football player contracts, at least in England and largely across Europe, will run from the 1st of July to the 30th of June, which is broadly in line with financial years and with the European football season. That allows for clubs to have plans in place, put the squad together before the season starts and play with that squad for the season. But there is a second opportunity to make changes to that squad and that comes in the form of the winter transfer window, which is in January. Traditionally, the Christmas period is jam-packed with fixtures and the post-Christmas period and running into January allows clubs to understand where they sit financially and where they can forecast a position finishing in the league that they're competing in. And in addition to that, they can also try to predict where they're going to finish in any knockout competitions in which they're still competing. All of these factors have a knock-on impact financially. It's a difficult one to predict because things can change on a game-by-game -game basis. Competitors may outperform themselves and clubs that have predicted to be able to compete well might not perform as expected. And the January transfer window allows for clubs to make changes to the squad in the hope that they can compete on the pitch. But is that always the driving factor? It isn't necessarily. Finances can play a part in the decision-making process in the January transfer window. And that might be because the club is predicting financial issues in the run-up to the end of the season. Financial fair play will be a consideration. But in some instances, financial fair play may come second to the requirements of the club from a cash perspective. Cash is king and it's no different in football. Even the biggest clubs have strict cash requirements and a blip on the horizon from the cash forecast perspective can mean big trouble. If we look at this from a selling club's perspective, there may be a requirement to get cash into the club. There may also be a requirement to get wages off the books, both of which can contribute to a financial fair play benefit by reducing costs and potentially from creating a profit from player registration trading. And a profit is being generated if the proceeds that are being committed by the buying club exceed the net book value of the player registration at the time of sale. That profit can obviously contribute to the financial fair play submissions at the end of the year. So clubs now have the opportunity to register players up until the 31st of January in England, and it's broadly the same across all of the major European leagues. The end of the transfer window is roughly the end of this month, although the deadline does vary from country to country. And the deadline restricts the registration of the player in that jurisdiction or in that league. There's often a scramble on deadline day, which can increase the level of excitement for transfer windows. A lot of business is pushed towards the end. It's a little bit like a chess game. Sometimes negotiations start well in advance and sometimes they're left until that final day. So anyone working off the pitch in the finance teams or the legal departments of football clubs can sometimes have quite a stressful run up to the end of January. This year is slightly different to normal in that we've had a mid-season World Cup. And that means that clubs, particularly those that have players competing in the World Cup, which will be broadly the most competitive leagues across Europe and indeed the world, these clubs won't have played as many games as normal. So we're a little bit behind the curve in comparison to where we normally are when it comes to assessing on-pitch performance and looking towards the end of the season or the end of the financial year to try to predict where clubs may finish. The World Cup's also presented an opportunity for players to shine on a global stage. Although the January transfer window isn't necessarily the busiest time of year from a transfer perspective, it's more common that the business is done in summer, but there can be some good deals to be done mid-season. There can also be a number of players that aren't performing in their current setup and there is a risk that they transfer to a new club and don't necessarily fulfill the potential or the expectations of that buying club. So there is a risk in January just as there is in the summer transfer window and that's both a financial risk and a football risk. Another oddity that we've seen in mid-season is that Cristiano Ronaldo has fallen out with his 
previous club, Manchester United, and has left with mutual consent. At least that's what's been reported in the press. Financially, that will mean that Manchester United will not have to pay out his salary, which was quite high, up until the end of the season. And fans may be hoping that those funds could be reinvested into new players, either in the form of wages or could contribute to transfer fees. But Manchester United is also up for sale. And that may mean that the Glazers choose not to do too much business in January because that would leave a commitment on the new buyer. Counter to that, with Manchester United being up for sale, the club is definitely at its most valuable when it's competing in the Champions League. So to be able to secure a spot or at least allow the club to compete in the Champions League in the following season, subject to the sale, is definitely something that the Glazers are going to want to consider. And that may mean that the Glazers invest in some players to make sure or at least try to guarantee that they compete in the Champions League and inflate the sales value even further. But what else are clubs going to consider when it comes to doing business in the January window? Well, first of all, as mentioned earlier, the cash requirement will be key. And we tend to see an element of deferred consideration when it comes to player transfers. There's usually an element paid up front and a deferred element paid usually on the anniversary of the player registration each year or potentially one or two years, maybe even three thereafter. Transfer fees are going to vary from player to player and there are varying factors that can influence that fee. The remainder of the contract, for example, the age of the player, how the player's performed, the injury history of the player, and there are a whole host of other factors within that. One thing that players can do to increase their value is to play football. So clubs could consider that when potentially considering a loan in or out of their club. If we have a player, for example, that has potential but can't quite break into the first team of our club, the club might decide to put that player out on loan and the January transfer window is a good way of being able to utilise that player that couldn't potentially break into our first team but could play at a different level or at a different club. When that player returns, potentially in the summer, in this example, if it was a short-term loan, the player may have increased in value and the loaning club may look to sell the player registration and the player in the summer thereafter. So there are plenty of options on the table for clubs and players to consider either for their own development from a player's perspective or potentially to help the club out on the pitch in the seasons to come or potentially from a financial perspective in future. Player wages are another thing to consider. So clubs may be in a position where they can't afford to pay the player's wages and would be looking to either temporarily or permanently remove the player from the accounting records or the books. This is a cash consideration as well as an accounting consideration as well. When players are loaned in a transfer window to another club, the recipient club tends to pay a fee to the loaning club in consideration to loaning the player to the recipient club. Another party to these deals are the agents. Agents will, will obviously get involved in the transfer discussions between clubs representing either the club on either side or potentially the player as well. And there are new regulations that have been published in January, but that's a video for another time. So in summary, clubs are going to be looking towards the end of the season, trying to assess financially and on the pitch where they're going to end up in the various competitions in which they're competing. They'll be looking at their current squad, seeing whether they can release some players or potentially need to bring some in to strengthen that squad. Some clubs are potentially overspent in summer and may need to recoup some of that money in January to be able to comply with financial fair play. There may be a longer term view with clubs trying to sign younger players or even looking to pick up a bargain in the January transfer window. But for all of those involved in the January transfer window, good luck and I hope that you can do some good business. My name is Neil Wood and I'm a football finance professional. If you liked the video, hit like, subscribe for more and hit the bell for any alerts for any new videos. Thanks for watching.